We are live. Three, two, one. Hi, everyone. We are Nyaneshwari Kamath and Aparna Joshi. Hi, Nyaneshwari. Hi, Aparna. And we are here today uh, to chat with you as part of Institution Trust's World Heritage Week celebrations. Uh, most of you must have heard uh, Dr. Purush Dalal yesterday when he spoke about the importance of heritage. And as he mentioned, heritage is what we are, not just historical monuments, but what we eat, how we dress, uh, and also how we play our games. So that's a big uh, part of what defines us, isn't it, Nyaneshwari? Yes. So Nyaneshwari and I are going to have a small chat with all of you today on why our ancient Indian uh, ancient board games are such a big part of our heritage and what we can do to ensure that they are not lost, forgotten or neglected. And more importantly, what we can do to make them more popular, to revive them yeah, among the coming, coming generations particularly. Nyaneshwari is also going to talk to you shortly about Project Kelia, which Institution has started to popularize these ancient board games. But before we start our little talk, uh, I want to give you some information about our exciting upcoming programs that Institution has lined up for the months ahead. Uh, just yesterday, we started a course uh, where you're going to be taught the, to read the cuneiform script of the ancient Persians. This is for the first time probably in the history of South Asia that a course on the old Persian cuneiform script is being held online and you all uh, are welcome to join it even though you could be a day late but you can always get a link to the earlier lectures and uh, do join in do sign up for it uh, Nyaneshwari is going to share an incident about a cuneiform script in relation to the games later but that's a little later we at Institution are going to be having some amazing walks and overnight tour of the maritime forts and tours of our fabulous caves at Elephanta, Karle, Bhaje. So you need to just keep a track of our website there, which you can see on the screen. Institution, um, you can write to us also at institutiontrust at gmail.com. You can visit the website www.institution.org. Keep a tab on our Insta handles so you know that uh, the exact dates when this all will be announced and you can join our tours. Uh, just to give you a sample, on the 3rd of December, we are going to have a nature trail at uh, Mumbai Zoo by, by Rani Chi Park, as everybody knows it, with Dr. Lattu and Dr. Sarumke, both renowned experts in their domains. Uh, from the 5th to the 16th of December, the fourth edition of the Civilizations of the World series, uh, focusing on Southeast Asia this time. Uh, will be conducted by Dr. Kurush Dalal. On the 17th and 18th December, we are going to have a tour of the forts of Konkan, which includes Kolaba, Revdanda, Korlai, and Janjira. Um, as part of the Institute and Destination courses, where we take you ar around the, you know, where we talk about these uh, tourism uh, destinations, um, we, are, we are going to have Khajuraho this time. Recently, we had one on Hampi, where we actually take you around, we give you the historical, credible information about these places so that you know where you're going before you land up there. And uh, then on the 8th of January, we are going to be doing a Caves of Elephant or Tour with Dr. Dalal again. In the third week of January, the Caves of South Raigad. On the 5th of February, the Caves of Karle with our own institutes and experts, Riddhi Zoshi and Yogini Atreya. On the 19th and 26th February, a big one here, a trip to Dholavira, the Harappan site of Dholavira in Gujarat. So that's quite a lineup there. So stay tuned, like I said, to www.institucent.org and our Insta handles. Now, over to Nyaneshwari as she gives you more about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, we've been talking about the work, what we are doing as Project Kelia team. We have been working on ancient games, which are played for say 100 years. Some of them must be played for 1000 years. Uh, we are working on those games, we document, we research, and we try to uh, organize workshops to uh, tell everybody what those games are. So we'll be talking about the games which are which originated out of India, but they travel uh, to India. We, we'll be talking about games which are originated in India and which have traveled through the length and breadth of the whole globe and reach everywhere, reach every culture. And uh, we would like to tell you that these are not just games, but a major part of our heritage. Don't you think so, Aparna? Absolutely, right. Yeah. So uh, yesterday, you must have uh, heard Dr. Purush Dalar talking about the importance of heritage. He has talked about monuments, games, and 
traditions. But he also urged everybody to take care of the heritage, which is in abundance in India. And unfortunately, we are not taking good care of it. So we have to come together and look after our heritage because it is our heritage. It is the heritage of our, of our future, also, future generations also. So it is our duty, responsibility to take care of it. You're so right, Nyaneshwari. You know, and at Institution, uh, we are so passionate about nurturing interest and encouraging the study mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the study of the past, basically, in the subcontinent. That's why we have this series of interesting talks all through this week, you know, the World Heritage Week. Yeah. Uh, we're going to focus on different aspects of Indian heritage, uh, some that you may not even have heard of. So tune in every day to hear more about all this. And now we are on to the game. So uh, there are board games which have existed uh, in the Harappan, ex uh, Harappan excavation. So they are 3,500 years BCE uh, era and we have found many of those games, board games, game pieces, some dice. Uh, here what you are seeing is from uh, the pictures are from Dolavira Museum and Dolavira the site is in Gujarat. Um, that again shows the boards which are etched on the stone slabs. You can see the uh, game pieces there. So People used to play games even in 3500 BC. Now, uh, we are not just saying that because we are having these uh, game boards and game pieces which are found uh, at these Harappan sites, that is why we are having, uh, we can consider this as our heritage. No, it is not like that. So, Aparna, could you please show us the evidence? Yes. See, here what we are seeing is the cave which has been excavated in the 7th, 8th century in Maharashtra, Aurangabad, where we are seeing the game boards etched on the steps of uh, this cave. Now, uh, these, uh, what you see on the right-hand side just now are some top marks on the step, and that is Mankala game which has traveled all the way to Africa, to India, through the trade. So we have got these uh, boards etched on the floor of these caves, ancient caves. Now, regarding Mankala, this has traveled everywhere in India, but mostly we find these boards in South India, and it is very popular there as uh, Palanguli or Arguli Mane, we call it Ekke also sometimes, or Gurupale. There are n number of names. And it is, it is a very famous favorite game of so many people in South of India. Uh, in Maharashtra, we have found this uh, game in many of the caves, many of the uh, temples, temple premises, and many of the forts, even the forts of Maharashtra uh, that are occupied and used and famous because of uh, Shivaji Raja. And we have found this game, but unfortunately, we have not got any information from the people around about the game play. That is Mangala mystery for all of us. That is what we say. Uh, these games are found usually on the uh, floor or on the steps where two people can sit and play the game. Yeah. Isn't it strange, Nyaneshwari, that, you know, we seem to have forgotten, Maharashtra seems to have forgotten. I mean, you see these Mankala boards everywhere, but uh, it, maybe there are some people among us who still play these games at home. Who's yeah, yeah, there are some people, there are some people, but it's very difficult to reach them. Yes, some of them have uh, told us that they play this game. They used to play this game, say, 20 years back or 30 years back, and now they have forgotten this game. So... If you yeah. don't know the game, we are going to lose it. I know. I think it's our duty to remember, revive and protect these games, right? Yes. yes. That's very true. Yeah. Okay. On to the next one. Now, uh, when we talk about care or games, in care, uh, it's a broad term used for board games and for sports also. Basically, we'll be talking about the board games today. Uh, in board games, there are three main components. First is the board, uh, which has got a definite pattern for each game. Maybe it's squares, circle, triangle, lines, whatever. 
and then we have gay pieces uh, tokens and we also have dice of different types and we have found a lot in the excavations of uh, ancient structures ancient sites they are tangible we can touch them we can see them huh? but the third component that is the set of rules you know every game has got a set of rules and it is it differs from time to time or it differs from place to place but there is a set of rules attached uh, to each board game now that is intangible the game play is intangible so if at all you have the board and if at all you have the game pieces on dice but you don't have the rules the game is lost now i'm going to tell you a incident here on the right hand side of the screen what you see is a famous royal game of pool or which is also known as the game of 20 squares it was being found in excavation in other means many of the bones were found but there were uh, nobody knew how to play that game so i went to tell who is the curator of the british museum and who can read the cuneiform script has uh, found a tablet which was there in the british museum and he could read that so this is the tablet which is there in the center you know the cuneiform script so uh, he read that out and then he found that these are the rules of the game of 20 squares which has been carved out by um, itti marduk balatu in 177 bc you know so after they got the rules this game got its um, another life it was revived so that is uh, what the script you know script reading uh, is important that is why and that is why we are also urging you to join the uniform script classes that we are organizing what do you think aparna absolutely it's a must but you know it would be so interesting i mean there's a i think there is a kind of a continuity in the um, games that we have found at harappan sites some of them we seem to be playing them still today no no but just just uh, wait so i have just talked about three uh, components that is rules and uh, board and game tokens there are many other aspects which are very 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 important as far as games are concerned see there are stories associated with games uh now there is a story in skanda purana the first manuscript the oldest manuscript is from 800 uh, ad so uh, that says that sari part was a game which was uh, designed by shiva so he taught that game to parvati and she mastered that game very quickly and kept on winning so shiva kept on losing everything jo daag pe lagaya tha us sab haar gaye so he was sad maine game create kiya aur nahi haar chuka hu so kartikeya entered uh nanishwari i think you have gone mute sorry is no, it okay? okay yeah so uh, kartikeya came and he said okay you teach me the rules so uh, shiva taught him the rules and kartikeya played with uh, parvati and he won all the games and he won all the objects that were won by parvati the worst part was uh, he gave them to shiva so Par- parvati was very annoyed and then uh, ganpati came to her rescue he said okay i will play and i will win that for you he did that so there was a fight in the family itself and the story says that narada had to intervene to settle the matter you know oh so this tells us that this game was important this game was familiar at that time mm. uh, and it was uh, important to the society members also and that is why it has appeared in this text now we also have uh, you know it appears in literature also it becomes a part of the literature we also have uh, manasal asa for which is a sanskrit text which is been uh, written in 11th 12th century and there is a part a krida vimshati and it also talks about some games so we have stories we have literature the games appear in sculptures also the games um, also you know appear in paintings 
um, it appears in um, other art forms, performing arts, dance, drama. So it touches all parts of our life. Games is something we play every day. I mean, you know, wherever we play it for time pass, we play it for intellectual stimulation or whatever. Yes. But games are games. I mean, you can just sit down to a game of chess anytime and just, you know, be engrossed. Mankala, I think, uh, Nyaneshwari, it sometimes takes days for a Mankala game to get over. Right? Yes, yes. It depends on how you play. And I have heard that Mankala game is played not only by two people, but by six people also. So Ooh. they have their own set of games. Right. So actually you can, I mean, these games are so adaptable, our ancient board games, that if you have a board, you have dice and you have game pieces, you can tweak the rules as you go along and make your yes. own. Yes, yes, very sure. Probably that's that is the beauty of this uh, ancient games. Yeah, probably that's what they did on the temple floors and cave floors and fort uh, windows, very wherever true. they sat, you know, the soldiers who had all the time in the world when they were on sentry duty, maybe, or the merchants who were just uh, taking some kind of a halt at one of the caves and, yes. you know, before yes. they started on the next journey. So they, they sat there and they played these games. And interestingly, they have survived over the centuries. And it's up to us now to kind of, you know, take that. Yes, yes. Very true. Okay, so let's see some more of what kind of games are there in our country. So we have, these are some pictures that you're going to see, which are of board games, which we have found across our country from various corners. I mean, the one you see on the top left is, uh, I believe from Bhaje, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And the one on the top, uh, in the center top kind of is a uh, Mangala game actually found in Raigarh. And the uh, same mysterious Mankala, yes, you know, on Raigarh Fort. Yeah, on Raigarh Fort. Yeah. So probably the soldiers, merchants, traders, or even just common people, we don't know. Yeah, because, it's quite possible. Quite possible. Yeah, they were playing that, and I think there is some interesting story about uh, tour guides telling people, "Oh, ye to uh, PWD ne dala hua, you know, marks hai. Marks <laughs> hai, you know, markers for dig, digging uh, poles or yeah. you know, holding poles together. So nobody really knew. That is the beauty of these things. These markings, I mean, probably you all also could be going around a temple or a cave or a fort and you might find these strange markings on the floors and you might wonder what exactly is this? And turns out they could be a game somebody played long ago. Yes. For instance, the center, the bottom center one is from Humayun's tomb, you know, Nanishwari. And that's one of the side chambers on the entrance. You can see that marble uh, kind of a monument a little behind. And this little game was so probably one of the guards sitting there. They just carved it on the floor and were playing. And Quite possible. Yeah. Interestingly, the one on the extreme right is a, a something that was found in Nagaland. Now okay. that yeah, so that that looks like a Bagchal board probably. And so you yes. find a Bagchal board in Nagaland. You find an Ashtachamma in Humayun's tomb. You know, so it, it, there's a common thread kind of binding our country. We were playing the kind of similar yes. game across yes. from the north to the south and east to the west. Also, yeah, and for so many years, from 3500 BC till today. Yes, yeah, that's the longest running legacy one could have. Yes. So what we are seeing here is um, uh, these are cave floors at Aurangabad. We, you can see a Mankala board and uh, below you can see uh, that's a Vagbakri board in the making, I think probably yes. unfinished yes. one, yeah. but that's what it is. And uh, the markers you see there are kept there by the photographer for, uh, you know, uh, kind of getting an accurate kind of an estimation how how big it is you know these yeah. kind of things Nanishwari I think that that helps us also to kind of document um, and you know because people find yes. these in uh, very different places so if somebody can just carry a pen a marker like this to kind of identify them take the geographical co co coordinates and send it to us we can yeah, that kind be of great help yes Right. We are making this database of research of these games. So it could be a centralized uh, repository of all the information that we could have. Yeah. That was uh, one thing that we wanted to tell you. Um, you know, like uh, the researcher Pankaj Bhosle was telling us it's really difficult to carve into stone. He said he had tried yeah. it. And uh, it's, it's really tough. So whoever has done these um, remarkable cave uh, etchings on stone must have really loved these games to be able to. Very true. Very true. Otherwise, yeah. they wouldn't have taken these efforts to, you know, carve it out in the stone. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And on the left, what you are really seeing is Fatehpur Sikri, uh, the Pachisi court in front of the Panch Mahal. Uh, here again, I think that folklore has it that uh, Akbar used to have the ladies of his harem uh, act as uh, game pieces and move around as the dice played out. Uh, of course, that's part of folklore, but then that's what games are all about. Yes. You know? Part of literature, part of folklore, part of art. Yeah. Let's go on to the... Okay. So right here in Mumbai, these are the Mandapeshwar caves where you have nearly 2000 year old um, alkar and backgammon boards carved right outside the garbagraha and we from institution have often gone there have played on this they can see them we can actually carry our own pieces and play those games so that and do you remember aparna when we had gone there we had called a person who was there visiting the temple you know playing there uh, we called him over to play with us and he said no, no, no i'm not interested and Sometime when he saw that this is quite interesting, he just came in and sat next to us. And then uh, he was so engrossed. He was you know, even suggesting us, no, no, you should play it like this, like that. So I'm sure that game must have uh, got into his mind. And next time when he'll be there, he'll definitely be having a look at those game boards. Very much so. Yeah, Very that's, much. that's how the games travel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how addictive they can be. Actually, you know, yeah. once you start playing them, so uh, so these Mandapeshwar caves probably eighth century, shall yeah. I say? So yeah. you know, we are playing on a board card almost two thousand years ago here. Yes. Yeah. So it's such an interesting thing. I mean, anybody who is in Mumbai can just drop in there, have a look at it. People are walking yeah, over and they have still survived. Yeah, and we are going to organize one workshop over there in December first week. So yes. stay tuned. Stay tuned for updates. We'll be announcing the yeah. date shortly. Yeah. Uh, here's another. Here's another from Mahakali. Mahakali came yeah. also from Mumbai. Uh, could be dated anywhere between the first and the sixth century, probably. Yes. yes. So that also looks like a Mankala board. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And this was, you know, uh, see what you see on the topmost part of the photograph. You see some marks. That is the concrete flooring that has been done for the restoring restoration of the cave. And these marks are on the bench, and that is why they have survived. So, if at all there would have been a game on the floor, you know, lost it. Probably lost several games yeah. to restoration. Yeah. Uh, also, because we were not aware, I think uh, not many yes. of us much research. Yes. No, not even us. Uh, before starting this study or this research, we also were not aware. We have to you know, accept that. Yeah. But now we are very, uh, very keen on looking out for the games. True. And we yeah. have a lot of like-minded people across the country who have been giving us inputs on what kind of research they have been doing. Yes. More of that later. But yes, this, this is very important too. Um, so here's some more. These are the famous Elora caves. And what you can see is uh, Shiva Parvati, um, you know, playing a board, playing with dice, a board game there. And yes. uh, yeah. Ajanta, again, we can actually see the board there and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a depiction of a game, ongoing game there. Yeah. That is something very interesting. I think uh, Nyaneshwari will be able to throw some more light on this. This is Marathi Kheranse Pustak, almost published yes. what, 100 years ago? Uh, it was published in 1905 by and written by um, this, uh, you know, all these games were compiled. In this book, Marathi Kheranse Pustak. And this does have uh, 200, 300 games listed in over there. Wow. But it doesn't only talk about the game boards or general game sports also, but he talks about the material, when they were played, how they were played, who were the people who used to play. So it's a sort of documentation of the culture at that time in 1905. And one more interesting thing about this book is um, we got one uh, photograph from one of our friends uh, from Sri Rashmiti, that is Pandalini from Nasik. And he said uh, whether this is a game or not. And then we were wondering, we said it might be, we don't know. But when we uh, studied this book, that game board was there, the rules were there. So it is exactly the case of what uh, has happened in the case of you know, uh, game of 20 squares. Similarly, we could revive this game. This was Udat Pagada. Oh, yeah. So we could revive that game. 
and uh, thanks to baba anand baba ji dev sir it is because of his documentation that we have found the game we could revive the game you know documentation is that very important so now I, one more interesting thing about this painting also open i would like to tell you is uh, in the didha nikaya in the century bc buddha has forbidden i mean this is the in that uh, it is written that buddha has forbidden his monks uh, from playing some games some dice games also and other games also and here in the jataka tales here in the jataka painting you bajanta you see buddha as bodhisattva in his previous birth playing a dice game mastering a dice mastered a dice game you know that is the power of the game or that, that is the importance of the game absolutely yeah. nobody can stay away from these games <laughs> <laughs> okay so another very interesting thing here uh, interestingly there are temples in india with a connection to games ancient indian games one that has come to into the limelight very recently during the 44th uh, international chess olympiad was this um, you know which was held in chennai was this chaturanga vallabhanathar temple in tamil nadu oh. Uh, yeah you got it right you know even the name has the, the word yes, interesting Kata, yes which is the, the original name of chess or which originated in india so it was uh, quite uh, ironical or you know really interesting that it uh, yeah, yeah but what is the story behind it how that yes. temple has got any idea that, Yes, yes. So legend has it that Lord Shiva was called Chaturanga Vallabhanathar after he won the right to, to marry the daughter of a local king uh, by defeating her in a game of chess. So apparently, this princess Raja Rajeshwari was a genius at chess, and nobody could defeat her. So uh, the, and so the king said that whoever could defeat her could win her hand in marriage. Uh, obviously, nobody could defeat her, and uh, the uh, the worried king obviously wanted to get his daughter married. So he prayed to Lord Shiva to come and help out. And Lord Shiva, disguised as an old man, came down and defeated Raja Rajeshwari at this game of chess, won her hand in marriage. and of course he shed the disguise and they got married yeah. and this temple is a tribute to that so it's called the interesting chaturanga vallabhanathar see how how the game is rooted in the minds of people you know absolutely yeah it's rooted in the culture <laughs> yeah it's rooted in our culture and and, and interestingly the culture the, the the aspects have continued so during this olympiad which was held just a few months ago uh, we had many households in chennai turning this very traditional ancient art of rangoli into you know depictions of uh, chess games so you what you can see is um, this aunty here has made such a wonderful chess set out of yes, rangoli yeah. yeah such a great way of keeping our heritage gaming heritage alive no see there are two traditions again two heritage one is rangoli making and game Absolutely. both going hand in hand yes both going hand in hand so true but unfortunately naneshwari i think the scene is not so rosy everywhere all the time and yeah. let's have a look at that too see basically what is happening is uh, we are not giving any importance to our structures our heritage uh, whenever we go out Uh, and visit any ancient monuments we look at the architecture we look at the art we look at the walls the ceiling but we hardly look at the floor and just now you have all seen that there are n number of board games which are etched on the floor of this ancient structures so uh, suppose there is a jinodha or any temple and if we don't document what is existing and suppose there is a board uh these sorry it's okay continue uh so they put this granite tiles on the floor and the data is lost if at all it is there so we have to be attentive we have to first document the structure ancient structure secondly whenever we go there if at all it is there and if at all we have to continue with the jinodhar so that is necessary uh to retain that structure then we can either photograph it you know make a pamphlet or mention it somewhere and maybe put a glass tile on the on the top of that and then still continue with the jinodha that is possible secondly uh see here what we see in here in this picture is the mankala board again but that is on the wall how it has gone on the wall so 
of all, the people must not be aware of the fact that this is a game. They have put it on the wall. It is on the wall of the uh, way to go uh, when we go to Hathi, uh, Hathi Talab uh, in Dawlatabad Fort. So luckily it is face up. Otherwise we would have lost that game also. So we have to be you know, slightly attentive. And the major reason is social apathy. That is what I feel. Even yesterday, sir was telling us the same thing. We don't care a damn about the heritage that is in other bits in our country. We really, really, really have to pay attention to that. True. I mean, it's not just the government's job, you know, but it can be up to us also to maintain. It is right. It is up to us. It is our heritage. So we are responsible for that. True. And yeah. this is some kind of heritage that if we don't really uh, preserve these games, they are not even monuments. If they are lost yeah. once, if they are just overlaid by concrete or something, they are lost forever. Yes. True. Yeah, but um, the scene is not that bad. Also. <laughs> there are people working on it. There are people um, working for a long time in India on these board games. Uh, here you see Mr. Raghu Dharmendra from the Ramses Kala Pratishthan from Mysore. He and his two colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, R.K. Singh and, yeah, RK Singh and uh, Dr. Gauda, yeah. they are documenting these games uh, around Mysore for so long. And not only that, they have been producing these games in a very beautiful manner huh, for sale. They always organize competitions also. They have a blog also. So they have been putting in efforts, tons of efforts, fabulous efforts by them. Then we are having, um, yeah, this uh, very live and cute and nice museum, very much in Mumbai, that is run by uh, Ms. Sophie Ahmed, a very generous lady. You can go visit that also. We have Mr. Pankaj Gosli doing his bit of work in New Mumbai. Uh, you know, popularizing ancient game. We also have Aman Kopal Surekha in Kolkata. You know, he is studying uh, Golok Siddha and uh, Moksha Pattam, and he is trying to popularize that also. So people have been doing you know, efforts. Um, that is a very you know, happy thing. Absolutely. So we have uh, researchers in our own field. In the uh, we've been trying our own bit to kind of popularize these games. So yes. what we are doing it uh, is, you know, we have a lot of uh, workshops and different initiatives. Um, so the, what you can see is we've been learning from other elderly in our families. We've been learning from whoever has these ancient boards at home, trying to understand. We have taken these uh, to different places. So Nanishwari and I have actually Pilani and uh, worked with four schools there. So the, the pictures you can see are children who have... Uh, worked. On, she'll tell you more about this, but what you can see in these pictures are they have drawn these uh, uh, games on the floors, collected uh, the, you know foraged for material to play with. You know we did yes. not carry any ready-made material to play with, but they have done it on their own. So and plus we introduce uh, people to uh, different. So we had an uh, in, interesting games weekend way back in 2019 which had a lot of uh, support from people. People came. Uh, Nanishwari will tell you more about that. This is just kind of an introduction to show you how we've been doing this. Also, uh, I think, uh, before uh, I hand it over to you, Nanishwari, uh, we have worked with like-minded people like uh, Dr. Walter Chris, Dr. Renata yes. Smith, who yes. give a lot of lectures on these topics. They have worked a lot on ancient Indian board games. So that's a yes. very interesting fact. You know, I mean, you can just Google for these things also. Maybe you'll come up with a lot of information very apart true. from what Mr. Sen has been doing too. Yeah, yeah. Over so to uh, in addition to documentation of uh, these games, we have been writing articles. So we used to write articles in the popular Loka Prabha magazine, you know, uh, in Maharashtra in 2019. We did a series and the book also is published of this compiled uh, article. Uh, then we have organized two conferences. So one conference was in 2019 in Parle where uh, people, uh, national level people had come to our conference. And in 2020, during Corona time, during the lockdown period, we had our first online international conference on games. 
So proceedings of the both are uh, available uh, on our website. So that is what we are doing. Then we are organizing free talks. We have organized free talks and we have organized these n number of uh, workshops, you know, everywhere. We have taught uh, students, we have taught parents, we have taught teachers, we have taught general public, anyone and whoever is interested in games. So we have been, uh, you know, trying to let people know what we know about these games. Uh, we feel that it is necessary that the heritage that we know about, we should uh, give it to others, the future generation. We should let them know that this is the heritage that we have. And that is why we are organizing these workshops. So that is the work we are doing. And um, what else? Uh, I think uh, what we need now is it to become a popular movement, you know, so people yes. should join in. Um, there are a lot of young people who are really passionate about this. Our own volunteers and workers and at institutes and our associates, we have fanned out over the country, you know, even if, during the lockdown also people were going online to search for things, people were yes. going out in the field. So I think that is something uh, very interesting. So we would like to tell you all that if you happen to visit, say, what you're seeing right now is the Zanana Mahal in the Udaipur's Pateh Prakash Palace. So this is something, you know, which you just come across and you see this, yeah. hey, this is a game board. Somebody was playing here in the Zanana Mahal probably 200, 300 years ago. So if you see such a thing, or maybe if you're just going to a cave and you spot something different, take a picture, take the coordinates, you have our, uh, I think you can see our, um, uh, can you can you see your email IDs down there? It's just yes. interest at gmail.com and Kalia project at gmail.com. So do write into us with the coordinates. Keep a pen next to it so that we get a sense of the measurements there. Yes. Uh, so you did write the date, the location, the coordinates and send us a picture. We will give you all the credit. You know, we, we would love for this to become a popular movement. And, uh, yeah, and that is what is important because every now and then we can't reach all the sites, you know, in Maharashtra. So, true. so it would be really great if somebody has the data and or somebody come across this uh, games mm-hmm. and let us know. We will be definitely be there and we'll find out more about that game. Yeah. And as for information, we are happy to share whatever we know. So if you want to want us to come and conduct workshops for you, you know, talks for you, demonstrations of the games, hold games weekends or a game evening, we are happy to do it. We are happy to come yes. and give you yes. demonstrations to help you play. We, we can do because all together that. we can. Together we can. It has to be a together initiative. So I think, uh, like like we said, it's a good time as any, you know, during this World Heritage Week to take a pledge to save our, keep our board games alive. Yes. So do follow us. This is all for today. If at all you have any questions, please uh, pose them here. Let us know. We'll try to answer them. If at all you remember something afterwards, do write to us on uh, instagram at gmail.com or project at gmail.com. We will answer your queries. We will find out uh, the necessary things for you, the necessary information for you. Uh, meanwhile, do follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Um, Instagram. Yeah. Keep in touch. Yes, Instagram. Keep in touch. Yes. And and let's join in- hands yes. uh, together uh, yeah. to work for our heritage. Right. And uh, do keep a tab on all those, uh, you know, the exciting Upcoming events. We have. Yes. Yeah. There are several of them coming up in the next uh, couple of months and there'll be more. So hope to see you there. Yeah. And one more um, just gentle reminder. Tomorrow, Riddhi Joshi will be talking about Chaul in this uh, section of Heritage and Instagram. So is there any question? No, ma'am. Oh, okay, so uh, bye and thanks for joining us. Uh, it has been a very great moment for us to share our ideas, our views with you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.